Welcome to Cardboard Swords, and uh, we've got an episode of Chalk and Talk here in the car uh, the with road. Chris Chalk and Ian Porter. Um, Chris team, Chalk's driver. Team Cardboard. <laughs> Chris Chalk's driver um, of Team Cardboard Swords, and we're on our way to a pro quest at Alpha Games. It's a little bit of a trek for us from Peterborough, but we've set off um, on our road trip and we're on our way. And we thought we'd record some thoughts, um, do a quick Chalk and Talk episode in the car. So. Starting us off, we've had the release of Bright Lights. Yeah. We're obviously going to a draft pro quest right now. Um, thoughts on Bright Lights, chaps? I think it's a pretty cool set. Yeah. I think um, I like the idea of it being all one class. It makes Limited uh, an interesting design space when you're designing Limited. So obviously every card is draftable, every card is playable. So like we saw we saw with the pre-release that um, Fatigue Techlo was kind of the play just because every card was playable, so you just played a 40-card deck and never boosted. That happens in every yeah. every pre-release, right? Everyone goes, oh, I'm just going to play a pile and fatigue because it's a strategy that people know and can do. Yeah, that's what happened with Azuri. Yeah. You have some pretty deep, some pretty deep um, picks before you actually need to really think about locking in attacks as well because this is quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Because, yes, there's cards that um, need to commit to heroes want, but they're all... There's no real bad card for any one of the heroes. Yeah, everything's playable. Well, I would say uh, the blue, the the blue shield, the sword one. I'd say that's pretty bad. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blue, yeah, blue shield. But there's, all, there's always going to be draft chat. Yeah, of um, course. And there's always going to be cards that are left to the correction of the pack. But I think that's going to be much less of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Everything is playable. And nobody needs baubles, it's a massive thing for me. Yeah. Not needing baubles is great. Yeah. Your baubles are now your items instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Your blue pitch are really bad items. Those are your baubles. So yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how I'm gonna fare at drafts, I'll be honest, chaps. I'm <laughs> last time we've only done I've only done one draft and it was a four player draft, so it was a bit wonky anyway and I went to draft a hero I hadn't played before, which was Max, and it was it was a bit of a shambles, to be honest. Well, yeah. how how confident are you guys the draft? We'll see what the packs give me. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see what what I get. I hope I get like a good pack one, pick one, and then that tells me who I'm drafting. And I just have to force it. Um, Ian, how are you feeling for draft? Um, I'm not feeling confident at all. But I think the draft is actually pretty open. I think Dash is probably the worst in draft. But I think both Max and Tech are viable. I actually uh, think, I think Max I, is the worst. Yeah, I think Max is the worst. I, really I think, think Max, Max is Max is Max will lose to fatigue the most. Yeah. Because Dash can go like. I think if you get if you get the right items, the ceiling's pretty high on Dash, and you can actually uh, go through the fatigue. Yeah. Um, but I think the floor can be very low on Dash if you get if it, if you get it wrong. Yeah. Um, if you if you draft too many of like the really bad items, you're just gonna have hands where you can't block. Where you know, obviously you've got you've only, you've got two less health than everyone else anyway, so you don't really want that. But yeah. stuff like boom grenade coming at instant speed, hadron collider, you know, like giving you a boost card plus four or plus three, depending on which when when you play it. Um, lots of utility items as well. Like I think dash is. Dash is definitely second best. In and my after mind. my after my ropey four man draft experience, I've written Max off. <laughs> like Max it was can, just so bad. Max can also get over the fatigue, but he needs a lot of like good pumps. Yeah, he needs to use use his hype drive as well. Yeah. The issue with Max is like if you want to play like like against fatigue, like you kind of turn off your hero ability because you can't. You don't want to boost that much. And if you're not boosting that much, you're not making hype drivers. If you're not making hype drivers then. What are you doing? Why yeah, you playing exactly. You're just a worse tech load. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but no, it'd be interesting. Uh, not been to Alpha Games before. You guys have been before, haven't you? It's yeah. In the middle of nowhere, right? Uh, yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere. He said, um, "When we when we broke for lunch, I oh, yeah, as a shop like if you go like left, then left, then right." Said, okay. So I started walking, and uh, I like, follow the instructions. I'm like, I look at this really long country road that looks like like it looks like it's got nothing on it on the map. And I'm like, I don't think this is a walkable distance. So I go, I turn back. I go, where was this shop? And he, he explains it again. I'm like, is it walkable? He's like, oh no, you have to drive. I'm like, oh, it's a good thing I didn't. Good thing I didn't keep going then. 
So I had some M and M's and something for lunch. You need to learn to drive. Yeah, that's, that's the moral of the story. That there, Chris. The you need story. to learn to drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So bright lights. So yeah, limited is interesting. Um, we'll see see how we go today. But what about its impact on the constructed meta? All I'm saying. All praise the Empress. <laughs> all praise the Empress Dramai. Hell, <laughs> that yes. tome, that tome that you were really that you just wrote off we, at start. Just what we needed, another dominant illusionist. That's absolutely what Russian blood needs. Illusionist being in a good place, that's never been a problem before. A way for Dromai to cheat her resource deficits. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Love so it. you're happy. Um, Ian, what about what about you? You got Um I'm slightly I'm slightly more concerned as a well while I enjoy But um I, I think the the top tier is very clear to mine. But I think after that, I think the meta is pretty broad. I think there's a lot of classes that are viable rather than just being like a big two and big three. Um, so, I'm actually not hating this meta as much as it would be, but it's just right away dominance. Yeah. I think the impact for, uh, for mechs isn't what people thought it was going to be. I mean, I think part of that is because Lexi's still in the meta at the minute, and when that goes, actually, it might open up um, open up some doors for maybe Dash, the original Dash, possibly Dash IO, which seems to be quite aggressive, but also has a low floor. And then I don't know about. I think I think Max and Teclo are just. I've uh, I've been hearing rumblings about people taking Max to Worlds, well, like um, good players. Yeah, I mean Max got um, it didn't get a top eight at the weekend or something. And... Well, with Worlds coming around, people might be what rather than what Michael Hamilton did last year, which is show his spice at three events in a row and win three events in a row people might be keeping the max tech a little bit secret so that they can uh, do a bit of a, a surprise a surprise bombing in, in words all right okay. um, at worlds uh, all right, i think we'll, we'll see i played against one on tyler shah uh the, 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 it makes night it makes You're not it, exactly keeping it secret on tyler shah are you well it's probably not the you know it's not gonna be the good players is it? it's just some random guy but um nitro mech is a good card and he makes it very easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nitro Mech is a card. It's probably his, his strategy into longer games, right? Yeah, Nitro Mech into, like, high octane is pretty good. One yeah. one Tommel tie. Yeah, one Tommel tie will just uh, <laughs> stop it, but... One Tommel tie, he, and that's, that's that. He makes, he, over. he makes the mech pretty quickly, so, you know. And uh, Jeremiah doesn't play Tommel tie very easy anymore. Because yeah. you're playing a red line, because now you're playing Tome, and you want every card in your deck to be red, you're not really playing blues and therefore like playing to Meltai will take the entire hand with a tome yeah it's so, like you've got to have to Meltai in arsenal play the tome and then like pitch your entire hand to play to Meltai. which yeah. granted you're pitching your entire hand to play to Meltai beforehand anyway you could play it off of like less specific cards um so i'm not sure if that'll come too much into it i think max will end up making the mech quicker than Jeremiah i can find to Meltai and tome but you know uh, Dromar players do seem to be quite worried on the international discord that how consistent and how fast Max can get the mech out because that can start doing some work into Dromar so I'm interested to see how he develops on that. Here's what you do. You use a bunch of non-phantasm attacks and then you and then when the hand's like got one card in it you play Kyloria and now it's my mech not your mech. <laughs> Steal the mech. Okay. Yeah, well, there's, there's my a, mech. There's a game plan. I think I personally think OG Dash was a good deck before. I think it just got better. I think it, it, it gained equity. It's just a slightly better deck than it was before. And because of um, because Lexi won't exist anymore, I think actually more mid rangey type builds with the pistol again is is more of an option. And the big thing, the big shot of the arm for Dash. Um, if she's got a spark of Julius and now has items that can crank. So she can fetch a crank item, uh, draw a card and get the action point for effectively a go again. Allows her some play lines that weren't previously available to her. I'm interested to see how that space develops. Yeah, I mean I was looking at I was toying with plasma mainline dash and doing a few lists and then we make best came out with one and stuff, but yeah, I think there's something there for OG Dash. I think it was a good deck before, I think it just got better. I think the meta might suit it better as well into, you know, Dromai at the top of the meta, maybe. I think a uh, Pistol Dash will be good. 
This is yeah. Joshua Gibson coming up. I think that's the only way to play Dash really with a Tecmo plasma pistol. Yeah. Um, cool. shows what about well, what do we think about the expansion slot and card availability of that? I mean, when when it was first announced, I thought it was like in every pack there was an expansion card. Some of them were going to be kind of like commons and stuff that were just, but they're they're all quite high rarity. But there's only two per box, and you got the price of tomes is getting a bit bonkers and. Availability generally of cards can be a bit. What, what do we think to that? I think the issue with like so the reason why Tome is so expensive is on average the expansion salt majestics are about on average five quid. Um, yeah. The reason why Tome is so expensive, if is, you can get them though, if you can get them, is because of the um, obviously the the higher rarity they are only two per box, and obviously it's in a large selection of different expansion slot cards. Because now you've got legendaries, like all your legendaries in a set are now in the expansion slot as well, so you can't draft them, which is cool because it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't skew a draft pod by pulling a legendary. Um, but the other issue you've got is sets these days have pretty low value, so like your legendaries from this set, you know your adaptive plating, um, like your nitro M1 or whatever the headpiece is called, they're they're good cards, but they don't they're not better than what we've already got. Um, so those typically don't have much value in them, which then leads to when single vendors are pricing their cards, they've got to really key down on the cards that are going to make them the money back. Because obviously vendors are a business, they've got to make their money back, you know, they've got to stay open. That's obviously what helps us get cards with it anyway. Um, so there's nothing against it. But obviously, like, Tome being such a good card that it is, and being in demand, you've just got that, uh, what is it, um, Something in demand. Supply and demand. Supply and demand. You've just got supply and demand, Tome. And so, therefore, Tome just kind of soaks up all the money that would be... Yeah, I mean, you said this. But what's the answer, then? Because you can't just keep printing legendaries that are better than previous legendaries. The power creep would be real. Like, I mean, at some point, you've got to, you've got to balance and you've got to keep things... You know, we've been through this phase, haven't we, of, like, powering down fab to a degree. Um, Brian Gottlieb talks about, like, action point economy and making sure that, you know action points are sort of limited in your availability to be able to get those which is why sort of Voltaire's gone out the window now so you know it's things like that won't be reprinted in the near future anyway I mean what is the answer how do you kind of solve this problem without power creep I don't think you can I think as a as a trading card game it's just a it's just part of, it comes with the comes with the house um, I would like the idea of the expansion slot because it means you can effectively print any card in any set and not have it affect the limited experience. And I think whilst this is the first go out, and yeah, there has been a bit of bit of chaff in there, like like um, tectonic surge and uh, slightly, for example, a bit just card looking for a solution. Smash your performance. Um, I uh, think have it, being able to have them in the pack and having legendaries in that end of the pack as well, and not having them had any impact on the limited experience. I think is really big, and I'm really excited to see what I do with that in the future. Yeah, I like the I like the idea of it. Generally, I just I think the execution's a bit. I think I think it should have been more more packs per yeah per box. I think yeah, I think they just need to up the ratio. I think we want we just want more expansion slot cards because at the end of the day, no. One, also, I really don't like that the adult heroes are in the expansion slot because it feels really bad to pull a hero. As your majestic, it's like, oh, cool. This is going to be like fifty p because the, everyone's going to have one. The, the right, the right is off as well because when I've opened a whole, I've opened what, a whole, entire case, entire sealed case, and received no adult heroes in that case, and oh, okay. it's that the right to feel off to me. Yeah, it should be easier to get the heroes, right? It should be. It should be tokens. Just make them. Tokens. Yeah, make them tokens. It should be easy to get the adult heroes. I think. Yeah. The, it, there needs to be a balance. Don't need as many adult heroes as we had had a previous set, but they should be a bit more readily available. Um, I honestly think they should maybe go back to double sided young and adult hero type of game. Yeah, just I don't yeah. see why that ever left. I know I like I like the double sided young and adult heroes. I don't know why they they got rid of that. I don't know whether it's just availability of tokens. I don't know. There's, but the design doesn't know why, but yeah, I, um, it feels bad when you pull a hero. It shouldn't ever feel bad when you pull a majestic hero. You know, I'm you just don't have a majestic stuff as tokens. I'm hoping that um, the it's a bit of a one-off for this set as well, because um, interesting in this set, they actually needed some tokens. 
in 20 single sided because you had the mandatory cards or the allowable cards and limited of the Proto base set, which had to be single sided to go in equipment zones. Yeah. I'm sure there's a way they could have could have got those adult heroes out to people easier. There was an attempt, but I think they could do better. Agreed. I think it's I think it's it, it's sticking with the idea that obviously like we had majestic heroes in Dynasty and now and Dust or Dawn, but that's because they're not core sets. So they don't have tokens. I think that's fine. Well they do have tokens, but they're in the set. So yeah. yeah. So um, looking forward, I mean, we've got, we, I mean, we've kind of talked about the current meta and what's going on really at the minute. I mean, we've got Lexi at the top still currently for this ProQuest season. Yeah. Um, she will live in legend out afterwards. You've got Drum Eye sitting there. Um, She's waiting. She's waiting. Icelander She's still alive. kind of a thing. Bravo's up there. Um, yeah. So he's. Chris, you're on drama. You're a happy, happy bunny. Expected to do pretty well this progress season. So I am a happy bunny, but also I'm not because her being so good means she's going to living legend faster, which means I'm going to have to pick up a new deck in six months. Are uh, they going to nerf her before then? You'll be all right. We hope so. We hope so. This is, this is the problem about basing your entire identity around a hero. What's that, Bravo? <laughs> you need something else to base your personality on now, Chris. So I'll play. I'll be. A, I'll be a Vincent enjoyer. Um, what about Bravo, Ian? You're, you. Playing Bravo this ProQuest season, uh, what what are you thinking your chances are? What are your good matchups? What are your bad matchups? Um, so I think Jumai is obviously the big one. I think I think that's Jumai favoured now. I don't think it's um, as Jumai favoured as certainly Jumai would like. Because I think she has to dig deep and work for that. I think it's a 50-50. Um, hmm? I think it's 50-50. I'd say more 55-45 to Jumai um, on the current aggro build. But, uh, but I think um, it's, early, it's early days yet, and I'm not sure we've seen exactly how that's going to develop. And right now, we're still at the end of the meta where we've still got to account for Lexi a bit. And I'm, I'm wondering what space that will free up when she goes. Apart from that, I'm feeling fairly comfortable on most matchups at the moment. I think Azalea is what I have to watch out for because she's about, just all over. What about Lexi? Lexi's, I think, is. Lexi's favoured, but Bravo can still be working to her because Lexi does not want to block and Bravo is just going to throw damage. Fair news. Um, I've flitted between various different heroes this season. Liquish all sorts. Um, I thought Rhino was a bit of a dark horse for the meta, but he's just rubbish. <laughs> he's just, I mean, he could be. And you, might mean, just, you might just be bad. I am just bad at playing him. I, I'll admit that. But yeah, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure... I'm not sure he's quite there. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to play a bit of Azalea. I'm going to stick with Azalea for a little while. I mean, I used to love playing Azalea anyway. I need, wanna... I need I need, to pick a class and just stick with it and play Rob, it. Rob, bit, really. she, she won a calling. You can't play her anymore. She's meta. She's not meta. She won, she won one calling once. That's all it needs. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, she, I, yeah. I mean, I was playing a lot of Lexi before Lexi got good. And, uh, yeah, but I, just, I can't bring myself to do it now. Can't be that guy. Hipster. Looking beyond the future meta, and we've got heavy hitters yeah. coming uh, in the new year. Um, what are we all expecting? We've had some cards released today. We have. I can yeah. flash those up on the screen. Um, we're back to uh, we're back to dual cards, which I really like. I think I really like the idea of. Um, okay, I, I didn't actually notice that. We've got dual class cards. Yeah, they are. They're all dual class. You've got uh, brute warrior. Uh, Brute Guardian and Guardian War uh, Guardian Warrior. So those are the three on the on, on the screen. Um, I think that's also a good way to sort of make every card playable in a set. Like it's not exactly every card is playable, but obviously like every card can go into two classes, which makes your the cards you're looking for much wider. I think the problem with that in Outsiders is a good idea, but I, there wasn't enough of it almost. It was it's because it was all Assassin. It was all Assassin Ranger or Assassin Ninja rather than like Across Assassin the... Ranger. Assassin yeah, Ninja across all and three. Yeah, Ninja. Yeah. But we'll see. Hopefully there's more of it. Yeah. Also, yeah, I, think, yeah. I think this time, because they're going actually the full, what looked like a full three-way split rather than just Assassin and X. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be quite interesting. I'm interested to see what they've learned from Outsiders, given Outsiders was their first go at it. And honestly, I'm just hyped to see dual-class cards back again, because I think that's a really cool idea. I'm interested to see where I go with it. 
Yeah, and I thought Outsiders was a pretty good draft environment, really. I thought it was pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, I definitely would have liked to draft that more, but they decided to take us back to Monarch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Took us back to Monarch. Game. I mean, PTSD. yeah. I mean, we could draft him more. We've got plenty of boxes at, uh, yeah. at our local game stop. Yeah. Say, if you're away from our box of uh, Outsiders, come to Angle Gaming Lounge. <laughs> yeah. They're discounted. Um, much, but, yeah. but no, interesting says you got some uh, some Guardian stuff in there, some Brute stuff. I think Brute is, is, is long overdue, some stuff for Brute, really. Um, probably, I mean, Guardian's had dribs and drabs of stuff, and it, it's been pretty good. Brute have had dribs and drabs of stuff, and it's been generally pretty poor. They have um, to, it's because they have to be careful with their Brute design space because of uh, Reinhardt. They do need to be careful of Intimidate, but it's. I think they can they can design around Intimidate to a degree, yeah. and then you've got uh, Warrior, which have had some useful pieces, but it's been a long time since we had any of these heroes have had a draftable hero. I'm interested to see what Warrior brings because really CC Warrior a lot of the time is just the Dorinthia show, um, with with our uh, Bolton being quite a different playstyle. So I'm interested to see if there's going to be either another adult Warrior. Or more adult warrior supports, so that um, even if it's just Dorinthia, there's going to be more play styles. Adult, gonna... adult Kasai. I'd love I, to see it. I think. Well, we're, so we're obviously going to see. I think we're going to see a similar set to Outsiders, where we have six heroes, three of which are returning, three of which are new. I think we could see adult Kasai, maybe an adult Ko. Not like same ability, dif- different ability for Ko. He's definitely not going to come with CC with a dice roll effect. It's still going to involve dice okay. rolling. Though. That's his identity. I don't care if you don't care if your opponent wins or loses as long as he gets well dice. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not sure what the guy. If, if, if they lean more into the dice roll, that's going to be brute. That's going to be poor. I don't. I, I, yeah, we really don't want that level of variance. Like yeah. a little bit of it is okay, and I think scabs is is fine. Like it's not. Uh, it gives the illusion that it's really chaotic and, and high rolly and variance, but it's really not. Like, why not not high variance to you know to that level? I think if your game plan relies on scabs, you can have a bad time. But um, scabs is a tool to dig you out of a potentially rough spot, or when there's no huge downside to a bad roll on scabs, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, knowing when to roll scabs is part of the, the skill of playing brute. I think skill I don't have, but you know it's fun. And, and if brute and if brute wants that consistency, they've got beaten trackers, um, which does a lot of heavy lifting as well. Yeah, which is one of the better cards they've had over over the, the last year or so. Um, so that's heavy hitters. Is there anything else? Any other business chaps that we want to talk about in terms of fab? Chris, you're off to worlds. Not, no, com- not, not competing, player, not player, not sadly, player, not sadly, but sadly. you're off to Worlds to yeah. soak up the atmosphere. Yeah, Are you going to get to do much sightseeing while you're out there as well? Are you going to go see the Sangrada Familiar? And... I mean, I'm not planning to, and I got I got a lot of flack for not planning to. Yeah, you should get a lot of flack just, for that. Why not? You're in Barcelona. If I was gonna, if I want to go for a sightseeing trip, I can just go as a holiday. That's yeah, but opinion. you won't do that, though. Why not? When was the last time you went on a holiday that wasn't playing cards? Like... Before I had to renew, like 2014, probably with my parents. <laughs> the defense rests. The defense. <laughs> um, it'll be it'll be fun. I, I want to go. I want to play some side events. I want to get those. Uh, sang- was it Sangra Sa- Familia? Sangra Sa- Sa- Familia. Yeah. Sigils. Um, they look stunning. Though I'm really not sure how I'm going to do it because I want to get all three for a play set, but I'm not sure. That'll be a good effort. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to play around one and drop immediately. Um, I don't know, but it'll be good. I'm gonna play. I'm probably. I'll probably play the calling, as much as I don't want to. It's a sealed calling. Yeah, but what are your what are it's, your thoughts on a sealed calling? I think if the sealed was better, it would be fine. Okay, okay. I'm gonna stop right there. They did a sealed calling for Tales of Aria pre errata uh, which is it was so bad. That format was so bad. People literally, you just put all of the other cards aside and you just literally play Briar, Briar with whatever you have. Like it was rough. Four, well, it's going to be four pack sealed for what is a single class set. So I'm interested to see what that happens. What happens there? But I'm worried the variance could be a bit off. It moves to draft though day two, right? Uh, I think it's draft top cut. Just dro- just top cut. Right, yeah, draft yeah. day two of the calling. Uh, okay, okay, I was going to say usually. I mean, usually the logistics of organising a draft for a calling is huge. I mean. Imagine having all those pods. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean it, could, it could have just been it could have just been CC. 
It like, could have just been CC, yeah. But I guess they I guess they don't want to take away from Worlds. So Exactly, yeah. There's that, yeah. However, if I don't make day two, the Living Legend format on Sunday. That that that's gonna be uh, interesting. And we've played a bit of Living Legend. We've yeah. had we've had some Living Legend games on the channel and pretty fun actually. <laughs> I thought it was just gonna be I thought it was gonna be pretty horrendous, but actually it turns out when everything's broken, everything's balanced. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, you kind of have your own balancing like in the game where obviously like different decks control other decks. So obviously like Starvo can uh Starvo can disrupt a lot of people with his like with his hero effect if you keep getting it off consistently. Chain just goes like nine card hands because you know he's bashing six of them. Um Raya obviously goes really wide and like big on hits as well, drawing lots of cards. Um, you've got the option of playing Prism again. I don't think you would, but it's there. Yeah. The reason you play Prism is because you hate Starve and wanted to suffer. But I think you would still get deleted by um, the sheer amount of Bloomblade in the format. OTK Visorai as well. There's a there's an event over in America. Uh, for some reason, they decided to put the, the OTK Visorai mirror on stream. Uh, oh, it was literally just them making rune chants for 10 minutes. And then as soon as someone hit like 43 with the new Sonata in hand, they went, okay, Sonata pay six or whatever it is. Oh yeah, you just got two. Cool, now I'm going to attack with anything and cool, there's 43 rune chance on the chain. I mean, I, I just turned the stream off though. And just watched yeah. The um, cool, is there anything else to discuss, chaps? I don't think, think there so. is. I think we're out. I think we're out. That's so, uh, yeah, so... Like and subscribe, and uh, more chalk and talk coming down the line. You can do a vlog for us, Chris, from Worlds. Of course. Vlog from Worlds. Um, Cardboard sorts of chalk. Yeah, we'll let you know how we get on at the uh, ProQuest season this season. And uh, yeah, on our way to a draft, we'll, we'll catch up with you after the, after the draft, maybe. All right. All right. In a bit.